Hi everyone. Matey strategies are constantly evolving. We as consumers want to know what the future workspace looks like. I'm Ricky Patel, Regional Manager at London City for Fujitsu, and this is Tech Focus. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Andy Trevor, MD at Cutter, and let's just get down to it, Andy. So tell me who Cutter are. Uh, Cutter, we're a 100% engineering company. Um, we've been around since 2005 and we specialize in virtual infrastructure, um, but with a real major in end user computing virtual workspaces. Okay, brilliant. So VDI, it's not just a buzzword. No, and, it, and if we go back a few years with um, with what happened in the world with a pandemic, that kind of brought that remote working right to the forefront uh, and we're still seeing the the aftershocks of that with more and more people looking at the remote working strategies, but also looking at um, shoring up uh, their existing um, uh, workspaces to be able to deal with uh, situations like that as well. So as you can imagine, um, through the pandemic, we were quite busy, uh, um, but that's not slowed down with people looking at, uh, at what they can deliver through uh, on that work, remote working side of things. Okay. And... As, as a VDI expert, I'll put you in that category, what else are you seeing? Um, we're seeing a change. Um, uh, and again, as I say, because of the pandemic, uh, a lot of organizations uh, rolled out a lot of uh, laptops and things to customers, uh, uh, to, to, their, to their users. Um, uh, but the, the use of Teams and Zoom and WebEx to do these kind of things has driven a, a change in the way that VDI is being delivered. Uh, a, a number of organizations are moving away from full screen desktop, um, but the applications still need to be delivered over those wide area networks to to set laptops and, and PCs of people working at home or in coffee shops or in, in drop in offices. So we're seeing a, a resurgence in application streaming as well uh, as part of this uh, delivery of the future workspace um, as people's working practices have changed. Pandora's box was opened by the pandemic and there's a lot of people that have got quite used to being able to be incredibly flexible about where and how they work. Okay. Um, and how are Cutter leading the charge in this space? Um, As I say, for, for, for since 2005, we've been doing um, VDI and remote access and user computing. But um, working with you guys at Fujitsu, um, we've built a, a package, which is a, a, a remote access um, assessment package, a VDI assessment package which we can work with you and your partners and the customers to, to work out whether VDI is actually going to be a, a technology that's going to uh, be relevant for them as an organization. Okay, so our listeners are probably wondering why. Why do they need to look at this VDI assessment? How is it going to help them? Yeah. Um, if I go back to when we first started, 2005, 20 years on nearly, um, VDI is still an incredibly complicated technology to implement properly. Um, we've made a living flying all over the world fixing broken VDI deployments. So one of the ways to get around um, uh, not having a broken initial VDI deployment is to go through a proper assessment package. And, and that's one of the things that we worked with you at Fujitsu to do was to put together this package to make sure that all of the bases were covered and that the deployments were always going to be a success uh, and we wouldn't have to be clearing up after failed VDI deployments, of which unfortunately there are still many. You sound like a digital superhero coming <laughs> in, saving the businesses. <laughs> yeah. So in your experience, let's talk about some sectors. Yep. Um, what, what, what are the VDI challenges in sectors? Let's say finance insurance, for example. Well, finance is an interesting one at the moment. Um, if we look at some of the high-end banking, the high-end trading platforms uh, traditionally, um, the kind of remote access has been delivered by um, one of your competitors, uh, HPE Moonshot, was uh, was the go-to for the, the high-end traders and devs. Um, HPE, about 18 months ago, discontinued that side of things. So all of these high-end banks are looking for different ways of delivering these platforms and working with you and a number of your banking customers. Um, we've been doing some assessments around what that future technology stack could look like. And we've had some successes already with, with a number of platforms going in. Is there any other upcoming areas that you're working around the VDI piece with? Again, we go back to that whole Pandora's box being opened by, by the pandemic is, is people's um, working practices have changed. Um, Organisations that are looking to modernise, rationalise real estate and things have started to realise that 
secure remote access working is is something that's really uh, worth investigating for them. Um, and especially as uh, they're now starting to rationalise the laptop fleet that was rolled out, whether that's a sustainable practice or not. We've got um, the Windows 10 to a Windows 11 migration that's coming up as well, which is going to cause significant um, retirement of certain PC and, and laptop fleets that aren't going to be Windows 11 compliant, which gives us an idea that uh, potentially VDI could be a way of, uh, of, of managing that process as well. Okay, so if there was a few final words of wisdom that you'd like to share with our listeners, viewers around VDI, um, I know I'm putting you on the spot here. It, it, it's definitely around using an assessment service of some form. It is don't go and deploy VDI without running a robust proof of concept. And the assessment service will go through that side of things as well. There'll be the initial calls, there'll be some scoping, some workshops. Um, and then there's a managed proof of concept that's actually run on the customer's site. And you need to run through your uh, all of your applications, all of your peripherals, all of your business workflows to make sure that if you do adopt VDI, that it's going to be a success. Uh, and, and the biggest area that we've been clearing up after um, failed VDI deployments is because that proof of concept was never run. That assessment package was never done properly. So if I was to put anything in front of these customers, it would be make good use of one of these kind of assessment packages. And the one that we've put together with you um, it is something that's been robust and, and we've proven that it works as well. Okay, that's brilliant. So to the listeners out there, um, if you'd like to deep dive into the world of VDI, please reach out to me on LinkedIn, use our Tech Focus webpage. That does conclude our Tech Focus today. So Andy, massive thank you to you for your expertise. More than welcome. Please stay tuned for the next version and episode of Tech Focus. Until then, think about your future workspace.